Hey guys, me, Rebel Chris Tomer here on this Friday. Let's talk some mountain weather. My first stop is up to British Columbia. This is Red Mountain Resort, a ski area. Uh, it, it is clear up there this morning. You're looking over the top of the resort down valley. Um, I don't have any significant weather for Red Mountain until probably the 30th. So the end of the month into the first week of October. Now the first week of October could bring um, precipitation for at least a few days. And we might see some snow over the highest peaks at that point. If you were north of Red Mountain, closer to Revelstoke, you may have some precip coming in tomorrow. But Red Mountain's probably going to stay dry until the end of the month. Let's go down to southwest Colorado. So this is the view from Telluride. And you're looking out towards some of the 14ers here, the Wilson Massive, that group. Uh, they actually did have snow on them a, a little while back, but it looks like a lot of it's melted off. But you see the cloud cover. So the cloud cover is coming from these this tropical remnants of this tropical system that has been slowly moving out of California now towards the four corners. Um, it's actually spreading a little bit of precip into Utah, and I'll show you that on the radar coming up, but definitely some cloud cover from that. Let's go up to uh, Winter Park. What a spectacular sunrise uh, we had with some oranges, and now that's faded a little bit. But still, you've got some snow left over from the last storm system on the range in the distance, and then the front range. And then you're looking at uh, a lot of snow that's melted here um, in the foreground. I mean, that was covered just a couple of days ago with snow. Off to Utah. Obviously, a little bit of cloud cover here. This is the, uh, the Mount Baldy cam at Alta Ski Area. And again, that cloud cover is from this. It's, the again, the remnants of what was a tropical system. It's way down here, but it's pushing some precip up. Uh, and some of this isn't even reaching the ground. It's just cloud cover. But you can see some of the green there on radar. I'll take you into the Salt Lake uh, radar. And again, just some very light returns here all kind of moving up to the north at this point, even into Idaho and a little bit kind of traversing towards the Tetons, into the Tetons at this point. Here's the view out of uh, Wyoming. And again, just some very light precipitation, mostly cloud cover, but you might have a little bit kind of crossing some of the higher peaks and moving into the Tetons up there this morning. Um, so pretty interesting. Um, let me just talk a little bit about what I'm expecting here in the forecast here are my bullet points. So we've got the tropical remnants. That's a that's a minor issue. The end of the month looks to become more active with one or two storm systems moving into the west coast and then riding into the Intermountain West with some snow chances. And you can see the best odds of snow here for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and also British Columbia. Now, this 927, like I mentioned, is probably closer to Revelstoke. And then a little more widespread, 929, uh, 930, and then another shot, 10 1, 10 3. In Colorado, you're going you're gonna to see some precip tomorrow afternoon across southwest Colorado, and then kind of spreading north to the rest of the zones, 28, 29, 30, and another shot, 10 3. And notice there's another shot even further down the road there, which I include in Wyoming for 10 6. That's all part of a more active pattern uh, once we get a little bit later in the month. Let me show you what all this looks like on water vapor satellites. So remember on water vapor, and this is in the middle uh, levels of the atmosphere, your oranges and reds are going to be your drier air. The moisture is in the whites and the blues. That's where the action is. And there's, our, there's the remnant tropical low right there. And notice you've got, it's pulling in some moisture from the south here. And again, some of that was kind of moving up around the Salt Lake City, Idaho, uh, Wyoming area. But as this low moves in this direction towards the four corners, it will increase the chances of precipitation across Colorado in the coming days. And then you've got another big area of low pressure up here into the Gulf of Alaska. Um, I also wanted to show you what this is, what it looks like out here in the Atlantic, because this is a fascinating developing situation out here. This is actually visible satellite because the sun's coming up over in the Atlantic. But you've got uh, Hurricane Umberto uh, right here, and then you've got an, an area that's being investigated right here, um, which could could become Imelda uh, once it reaches that strength level. Um, 
where it qualifies. But the interesting part is obviously their proximity. That's interesting. They're close. But what's going to happen is what will be Imelda appears to track up in this direction towards the Carolinas. And the Hurricane Umberto behind it will come in behind it and will stay fairly close. And the two will kind of do a little bit of a dance. And I'll show you what that might actually look like in the forecast coming up. But that's a pretty interesting developing situation. <clears throat> Let me just show you quickly. Let me switch over uh, to this. Just show you quickly what this could potentially look like on the, uh, the forecast water vapor satellite. So I showed you this yesterday. It's a beautiful product. So there's the uh, area that's being investigated. There's a front that's kind of moving down across the East Coast. So there's all these different features that are going to come into play. Will the front direct it back out to sea? Will it be more like a catcher's mitt as it moves into this area of low pressure? There's our remnant tropical low, and there's a tropical system down there. Okay, we'll do this a little faster than yesterday. I'll just move this ahead in time. So there's early Saturday morning. There's early Sunday morning. There's early Monday morning. So early Monday morning, you've got Hurricane Umberto right here. You've got probably a tropical storm, maybe even a low-grade hurricane uh, right here moving towards the Carolinas. Notice how close the two systems are. Now out west, you have just the remnant moisture from that tropical system there. And then look at this big area of low pressure here moving into the west coast. That could be the action for the west coast and then eventually the interior in the month early October. Okay, here we go. There's early Tuesday morning. There's early Wednesday morning. Now by early Wednesday morning, you got the hurricane here on Barito, you got the remnant moisture uh, from what would be a Melda. So what happens to the two systems now? Does does uh, the hurricane, does it uh, siphon in and pull in all of that moisture from the, the tropical storm or the low-grade hurricane? We'll have to wait and see, but there's going to be some interplay. Now, out west, it looks like you've got a storm system right here crossing the Rockies on the 1st of October, and another storm system set to move in to the west coast, Pacific Northwest. All right, here we are Thursday early in the morning, and and. What this model does is, now look here, it, it actually keeps that storm system and meanders it. That could be a very heavy rain scenario producer right there if that just sits for days. We know what happens in those situations. All right, here's our next area of low pressure moving into the Rockies. So again, could be active late in the month and then again early into October for the Intermountain. Uh, here we are early Friday. Here's early Saturday. This is October 4th. Here's October 5th. And almost, there's late October 5th right there. So pretty interesting to see how all of that plays out um, into the forecast. All right, let me show you what all this is going to look like. These are atmospheric pressure anomalies in the middle of the atmosphere, so about 18,000 feet up. Um, this is effective today, so there's our remnant tropical low. Now notice this, these drop, these lower pressures along the east coast, that could be our developing storm system right there. And then you've got lower than normal pressures up here in a lot of BC, Alberta. Um, all right, now this is Tuesday, 9.30. So early next week, there are our two tropical systems, very close. And then you've got this big drop in pressures moving into the west coast. That's going to open the door for that active pattern late in the month, early October. Here we are on the 6th, and this is an AI model right here. This is on the 6th of October. It's got a pretty sizable area of low pressure, lower than normal pressures right here, dipping the jet, um, moving through the Rockies there, 10.5, 10.6. Um, that could mean cooler air and the chance of snow in the forecast. All right, let's look at a time height forecast. This is for Wolf Creek Pass in Colorado. Um, so here's our current day. You move in this direction to see the future. And this is a slice right through the atmosphere, and I'm looking for the greens. That's going to be your higher relative humidities in the atmosphere 
uh, more moisture right there. So there's a little bit here higher up, but then this is the more appreciable chance of precip right here. And what you're seeing, Wolf Creek is in southern Colorado. What you're seeing is an increase in moisture from this remnant tropical low that's moving in from the west southwest towards the four corners. So this would represent a chance of precipitation. Um, certainly some snow over the higher peaks possible there. And again, that happens on mainly, it might be a little bit of that on Saturday afternoon, but more on Sunday, Sunday afternoon, and into Monday, and maybe even Tuesday. So some higher chances of precip right there. Let's go back up to Berthoud Pass. So this is in the central mountain corridor of Colorado. Um, off I-70 near Winter Park and Highway 40. Notice a very slow increase in these snow chances, especially late in the month, 29-30, and then in the first week of uh, October. Um, this generates about three or four inches of snow there. It's the ensemble mean over Berthoud Pass. So we'll see. Um, it looked to me like the storm track was a little north of Colorado, more so across Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, BC, Pacific Northwest, but some of it might make it into Colorado. Here's your 10-day snow forecast across the west. It's not as impressive as yesterday, but still looking at it, maybe three inches there uh, over the high peaks of Colorado, maybe one to three over the high Uintas. And there is some there in Wyoming, maybe up to six, maybe over the Wind Rivers. Um, and you can see where the storm track is kind of firing right here. There's a bit of snow in Idaho and Montana, but certainly a lot up here in the BC and Alberta. So that's kind of how things play out. Let me take you in just a little bit closer. So this is the 10-day uh, the snow forecast for a lot of Wyoming, Idaho, uh, parts of Utah and Colorado. Remember yesterday how impressive this looked over the high wind or over the, uh, the wind rivers. That's not the case today. You still might have a six inch amount there. A little bit of snow here in West Yellowstone, Bighorns, and potentially up to three inches there over the zones of Colorado, and maybe a three inch amount over the high winds. So, bottom line, not as impressive as yesterday, but this still generates some snow over the next ten days. All right, guys. Well, there you go. A uh, lot to cover. From tropical weather to mountain weather. I hope you can uh, appreciate it all. Take care and have a great day today.